Yes, sir. All right. What's good? What's good, Cool B? What's good, man? Yo, what's going on, Mr. Merce? Chill man. Chill man. Happy How are you, man? Hey, man. So let's do it, man. This is the um, the first show of 2018 going into 2019. So uh, we want to make this pretty much a show that's kind of catering towards everything that was been that's been going on in, in this new in this year, leading up into the 2019 year. So let's do it, man. Sin Radio, strength in numbers. Cash, man. Strength in numbers, and just for all the people that's first time tuning in. I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your man, Cool Breeze. And this is Sin Radio Cast. Um, we got we we uh, came together to do this little podcast here, and we wanted uh, folks to just tune in and just you know share their thoughts. We we uh, talk about a range of topics, and today we're just going to pretty much do a recap of the 2018 as far as the year is concerned, major events that happened uh, throughout the year, and. You know, just we're just giving our take on a lot of different things that transpired in, um, in the last year. So, you know, um, uh, Cool B, um, he, you out there on the West Coast. Um, I'm over here on the East Coast, Atlanta to be exact. He's in Los Scandalous. Los Angeles, <laughs> California. You know, it's nice and sunny over here right now. And um, I'm trying to give you the real from the West Coast and Merce is on the, on the East Coast and be giving you the real. So, we, co- we combine that as one Voltron, you know? Yeah, man. Um, some straight uh, bi-coastal stuff. Um, and we, you know, just want to give y'all a good show. So, man, let's get right into it, man. 2018 was a very uh, interesting year, man. It's It was a year where uh, the death toll of artists, like, hit an all-time peak. Uh, a lot of people say this is probably the deadliest year for, like, artists as far as rappers are concerned. Right. And, you know, we lost a host of, uh, of, of very talented um, artists, man, this year. I mean, I just went through the list. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was in shock, man. Like, you know, I don't know if you remember, but back, you know, in the 90s, you know, you, you, you lost guys like um, Easy e you lost Tupac, you lost Biggie. Yeah. And those things were like really big deals. Like, it was really big deals that those guys passed away. And now it's like that number has really gone up like significantly and 2018 is just one of those years. It, it was a it was a lot then because it was like Grandmaster J, uh who else? Um Jam Master J. Yeah, it was, it, a couple was, of people. was it Jam Master J? Yeah, Jam was Master J, man. Yeah. Yeah, but it was in the two thousands, right? Jam Master J? Um, I think it was, yeah. Well, two thousand two. Maybe two thousand. Maybe you're right, maybe it's two thousand. Yeah. But um, just the what the point you know is just like you have a lot of artists right now who don't kind of learn from other people's mistakes. You know, all these people that have been dying then, you know, uh, not all but a lot have been dying at the hands of um, gun violence or or some type of violent act. But then you have these younger guys who don't want to learn from other people's mistake or or heed other people's warnings. And they just say, you know what? You live your life the way you live your life. I'm going to live my life the way I'm going to live my life. But at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, I don't, I think the older generation, they're not preaching to these guys, but, you know, they've been in certain places that these younger guys haven't been. So it's just like, you know, a lot of these guys, I really think the older generation cares and they don't want to see these guys making some of the same mistakes that, that they made. And it's kind of just throwing some words of wisdom, but a lot of these dudes are hard-headed, knuckle-headed people, man, don't want to listen, and they kind of learn in the hard way, in my opinion. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, kind of, I kind of think about uh, something that Nipsey Hussle said in the interview. It, is, it was really um, some real stuff that he said, and he said uh, he believes a lot of the OGs uh, kind of gave bad advice uh, to the young, the young mm-hmm. Gs. Uh, way back because back then in their time they didn't have the technology that they have today right and I, a lot of the ogs a lot of people like to play devil's advocate can say well how are these ogs supposed to tell these young boys what not to do when when a lot of this stuff is based on technology a lot of artists are going down based off of things that they post and you know some people might say well those guys 
when they were coming up, they didn't have that. They didn't have Twitter. They didn't have location services. They didn't have um, CCTV as widespread as some of these artists are now. And it's kind of kind of segues into something else that I wanted to talk about in the year as far as uh, data breaches, as far as, you know, that's something I wanted to go into as well, but that kind of ties in. Right. Kind of about it, it's like a different era and things are changing so much. Technology is so uh, advanced now that artists don't have to really go through the same um, procedures and the same red tape that they used to have to yeah. uh, back then. So a lot of people will say, well, how are the OG is supposed to teach them when the technology is so different? And, and, and you know, so that's a lot, a lot of people's arguments. Yeah, I, I think so. But I just think that, I, and I agree to, to an extent. I mean, the technology is going to be more advanced now. But I think that some of the same principles that apply then still hold a lot of weight now. You know, you have a lot of guys who are older guys who may have, who may, you know, have went through similar situations of gun charges or did some jail time, came back, and they could speak, you know, from experience and say, well, you know what? I see a lot of you in me. I was doing some of the same things that you were doing, but now it's like, I think now comparing how a lot of these guys, these artists are getting treated now or, 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 or some of these situations that they're going through with the court system in jail, I think now more than ever, these judges are trying to lock them up and throw away the key because now these guys, these guys are getting hit with stiffer numbers than some of these the older artists were getting. Some of these artists were probably getting like three years in jail, four years in jail. Some of these newer artists, they try to just pretty much lock these guys up or just throw dirt on them and say, you know what? I don't really like this new generation. I don't like what you guys are representing. You guys are the enemy. So now I'm going to give you 15 years and then offer some trumped up charges. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's something that I also wanted to bring up. I guess everything's kind of segueing into each other. Right. But mm-hmm. this year has been, it's been a deadly year for artists. Right. But it's been a year where you've seen a lot of artists pick up federal cases. Oh, yeah. Is something kind of new. I've never really seen federal charges being brought against artists. Like you look at the Takashi Six Nine situation, mm-hmm. and you 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 spoke about OGs that see certain things within the newer artists that they saw in themselves when they were their age. Well, right. I'll give you a Fat Joe had an interview on his yeah. uh, podcast, and he sat with Takashi Six Nine, right. and he said it. He said it so many. I tried to warn him. I tried to warn him. They're going to come after you. Right, you know, and th- in that scenario, uh, an OG, Fat Joe's an OG. Salute to Fat Joe. Yeah, he's an OG. He's been around. I mean, come on, let's think about this. Fat Joe's been around since what, ninety one, ninety two? Yeah, I mean, he's a triple OG. Right. Honest. So, so that dude, Fat Joe, and and he's an official dude. He's an official street dude because that dude, Fat Joe, is running in the streets in the Bronx. And then I guess after that, you know, he had a talent and some people were kind of pushing him. So then he was with uh, Digging in the Coats and then his career just kind of flourished from that point on. So man, Joe, he's, 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 put, he's put some skin in the game, man. So, you know. Got a lot of skin in the game. Right. I just wanted to go, just kind of go back on that whole thing with the federal government. You think about the artists that went down this year, man. Um, you think about uh, a, a guy like... Um, Rollo in Atlanta, he went down. Yeah, uh, there. Were, I'm not sure if this happened this year, but it was an artist in, out of New York by the name of Rod Diggs. He's he's um they they threw the book at him. Yeah. He's done coming home. Um, you think about Takashi Six Nine situation as you mentioned yeah. before. You also think about uh, Ar Ab. Ar Ab, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And I'm noticing this year, it's like what you said before. Before you know, you would get these state charges and um. You know, you might get a, a year or two. You might get just get probation. But you're noticing now, especially in the um, the Eastern, I believe it's the Eastern Dix District um, in, of New York. Uh-huh. I mean, they're, they're really ramping up and they're really targeting rappers. And a lot of cats out there don't realize that the, the feds is the state's steroids. Okay. <laughs> so if, 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 if you do something on a crime, 
And nine times out of 10, you're going to serve a lot less time on the state level if you do a crime and as opposed to you being convicted of a crime on the federal level. I mean, the same charges that you might get, like, let's say, three to five years in the state. And right. when you could see deals, um, in the feds, it's a different story. Yeah. Um, they got a point system. They uh, they look at your priors yeah. and got mandatory minimums. So it's like the judges really can't negotiate with you. It's really no negotiations. It's right. like, mm -hmm. these are the counts, these are the minimums, and based on if you cooperate with us, which is what the whole system, federal system is based on, yeah. it's based on confidential informants, is based mm -hmm. on cooperation. They don't really do a lot of work. They just put a lot of pressure on you and right. they give you a choice. And they mm -hmm. don't make idle threats. So you look at a Takashi 6 9 situation, when they bump that up to the feds, these counts that these guys, well, some of these counts were carrying 25 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you these same charges in the state, you, you, you might be looking at like, let's say five, seven, maybe 10 years. Mm -hmm. like, I'm noticing this year, there's a pattern of the state literally feeding the artists to the, to the feds. Yeah, easy. It, it's, it's not, you can't, you could can be a blind man and see that, you know? <laughs> it's just like, um, it's just, it's, it's not just one case, it's, not just two, it's been like multiple cases that have been happening that should make a lot of these artists say, you know what? Let me stop and think about what's going on around me and, uh, and, and seeing what's going on within the hip hop community. Because I think, and you don't, and it doesn't take a genius to see that, um, I think the community, the hip hop community, hip hop family, they're kind of being targeted to a certain degree, man. And I think that- Always been. Oh yeah, always been. Even with, um, they have like, uh, what was it, the hip hop police that have been following a, a lot of these artists around. And I'm like, yo, dude, why are you guys following artists around when these guys are just using their talent to make music? Why are, are, are the police following these guys? So you're saying that if all of these rap artists were all dentists, will you have a dentist police following these guys around just to make sure that they're not, um, um, these guys are cleaning people's teeth and all of that, but we're gonna arrest you for helping these people. So I'm like, so if they weren't doing music and they would, and all, collectively they were all doing something else, would you have a uh, a reason to follow these guys around and try to plant something on these guys? It just right. doesn't make any sense to uh, me. Dude. Would you have a squad dedicated to them? Right, to exactly. Resources into getting these guys jammed up. Fair, fair. That's a fair question. Yeah, yeah. You, listen. Question. You gotta ask a lot of questions to get, to get some answers, man. So that's what that's what we're posing. Putting these questions out there, man. Let's get some answers. Is it true? Is it not true? And things that make you go, hmm. hmm. So yeah, man. So we, you know, we like I said, everybody just tuning in. We're just talking about the year 2018. Um, a lot of the major events that transpired within the last year. Um of course, the death of a lot of the art, urban artists, artists such as um, X, X, Young, yeah, uh, guys like um, what's the guy from Louisiana? Um, he was um, killed by the uh, Waffle House. Young Greatness, you know, dude. Uh, and yeah. it was another. It was another artist too. I, I don't remember his name. Um, he was killed the same day as Triple uh, X, but he was in Pittsburgh. Jimmy, um, Jimmy G. Uh, I think guy, was, right. He was killed the same exact day as as Triple X. Yeah, that's true. That that's one hundred percent. That's one hundred percent. Yes, mm -hmm. I do remember that. Uh, there was a lot of guys. Mac Miller, and Mac you know Miller. what? Um, cool B man. Let me tell you something, man. Something I noticed <clears throat> about these artists, these different artists that have passed away within the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Fredo Santana out of Chicago, uh, Chief Keith's cousin, also. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Passed away. Um, let me let me tell you something. It's kind of disturbing, but I noticed there's really two modes of uh, let's not say modes, but two ways these artists primarily have have passed on. And my artists are very young, very very young. Yeah, um, way too young to be in a casket, and with way too much um, um, potential and way too much promise. And it's it's really sad. And when you look at the situations, man, I, I noticed there was a, a 
kind of like you could say a common denominator between the two. Mm -hmm. Gun violence. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are not talking about the drug overdoses. Right. Some of the artists like Fredo, um, guys like Mac Miller, mm -hmm. um, a lot of these artists are uh, passing away due to, to heavy uh, drug use, the lean culture, a mm -hmm. lot of things affecting these brothers and taking them out way too early. I noticed it was, this mm -hmm. was just a common a common thing that I kept seeing across the board. It's a, it was like a pattern, you know? Yeah. And right. um, I think 2019, I think people need to start paying attention to patterns and trends. Patterns mm -hmm. and trends. You got to pay attention, folks. Right. Because you notice certain patterns throughout the, throughout the different years. And you got to be aware of these things because you see the results of, of, of not paying attention to these things. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, man, that's something uh, I, I definitely took notice to was, was that the, the, these artists were really going really at really young ages. And it still disturbs me because when I was younger and Tupac passed away, yeah, and passed away, I, I was in a state of shock. Couldn't believe it. And now it seems like we're becoming more desensitized Right, yeah. To the death of artists. If you really think about it, it was a big deal. Um when let's 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 think let's talk about Biggie for a second. Right. When mm -hmm. he passed away, it was a it was like a big deal, it was a big shock. Tupac was already a big shock, but yeah. it was such a big shock that, you know, Puffy did the um the record I'll be missing you, which a lot of people will tell you wasn't even really written for Biggie, but obviously he took that record for source money which uh, was uh, supposed to be dedicated to his mom, I believe. And mm -hmm. he used a record. It became a big record. And then, obviously, the locks did um, um, Always Miss Big Papa. Yeah. But you, 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 you don't really see that nowadays with the, the, the artists that have passed away uh, recently. You don't, you're not really seeing anybody dedicating. And to be fair enough, a lot of these artists are going, you'll notice, a lot of them will go way ahead. Like, they'll be getting killed on their way up. Guys like Marley G, um, yeah. uh, artist mm -hmm. that will sign a rap a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, was, you know, he's still getting making a name for himself. And I feel those artists are the the most vulnerable. And let me tell you, me because artists are not exactly that big, mm -hmm. but they're big enough. And big enough to be able to be reached. And they're still, you know, those are the artists mm -hmm. that Still be around the way and it can still be touched. And you know what? And and, and when you said that, a rap, a, 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 the rap artist that came to mind was um, Stack Bundles from out in Queens. I remember when that situation happened because he was still in the streets, he was still going to the hood or whatever. And um, and there was another artist as well from Queens too, man. Um, I think it was um, French Montana's guy, uh, Chinks, Chinks. And he was still going on the hood, but I well, think you know, you know Chinks was uh Stack Bundle's man. Yeah, yeah, Chinks was Stack Bundle's man, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he was locked up, I believe, when Stacks was uh Stack Bundles was uh killed. And for all those who don't know Stack Bundles, he used to run with uh he used to run with DJ Clue Desert Storm, but then he started running with Jim Jones. Jim Jones, yeah. Yeah, when he had uh, the balling record. So and and then and that dude Stack Bundles was nice too, man. I think if if he would have had some more time, or, uh, you know, in his life, he would have been a big artist up there because I think a lot of people kind of slept on him when you know when he was coming up. But after he died, I think a lot of people started bumping his music. Like, who's this Stack guy? Who's this Stack Bundles guy? His music was definitely nice, man. He was good. I had one of his mixtapes. The kid was phenomenal. Yeah. And the thing about Stack Bundles is he had the look too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was he was well on his way. He was he made the connection with Jimmy, and like I said, he was at that point, that in intermediary point where yeah. an artist is getting in there. He's starting to send, mm -hmm. but still accessible is the word. So let me ask you this question: So what do you think the problem is with that? Because we kind of saw that with um, Triple X down in Florida, we got killed. Um, you know, Stack Bundles got killed and Chinks got killed. So what do you think the um the issue is with these artists that have been dying way too soon? I mean, to be honest with you, man, um 
it's kind of a deep answer, but it, it, it just comes down to a jealousy. And and a lot of these young guys out there are exhibit, exhibiting their mama's behaviors, the, the single okay. parent home, um, the jealousy, the, um, and, and it's like, a lot of these guys are like male, they're males, but they're reasoning. And I know a lot of people are gonna throw slack at that and people are gonna get upset with that. But the, you can tell by some of these young boys I talk to, their reasoning is not that of an of a, of a alpha male or somebody that's going so, so it's not it's not the artist, it's the people that was targeting the artist. Yes, a lot of times right, okay. targeting the artist. Sometimes, and it's not always the case, sometimes it's the artist. Sometimes the artist has done, some artists have done screwed up things and fucked up things to people in the past, and it sometimes it comes back to haunt you. You know, right. it comes back to bear's ugly head. So, so I'm not gonna say everybody in these situations is completely innocent, but for the most part, uh, when you see situations like the young greatness situation, it's just unnecessary. It's like, what's the motive? Right. You know, motive. What's what's you know what is this about? You know, it's 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 just a real sad um, thing to think about that when your your some of your most favorite entertainers on their way up are getting clipped off. Right. And I think. When you see that, a lot of these artists who are who are dying, I think also, and we can talk about the um the Kashi Six Nine situation as well too. I think that um you know from what I heard, because we don't know him personally, I heard he was he's like a real good guy, or whatever. I've seen videos of him handing out money to people and stuff like that. But I just think, and this is my opinion, do you think that the cockiness behind it? And the mouth and the mouthing off and the beef with people, do you think that was a part of his demise? Oh, without a question, man. Okay. You know, the energy, energy is like a boomerang. Like mm. what you put out is typically what you're gonna get back. And a matter of fact, it's an absolute fact to me that what you do put out is what you get back. And it doesn't always come back immediately. Right but it will come back and it will come back typically at a point where you're not expecting it. And unfortunately, I, I believe Takashi was in a situation where um, he was told to do things and, and the way he wanted to do it and there wasn't gonna be no consequences to it. And like I said, the OG Fat Joe tried to warn him. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're high up there and you know, you're the man of the hour, people are just gonna do the things and say the things that are going to appease you. Right. And I think in that situation with him, unfortunately, he, uh, you know, he bit more than he can chew. And I don't believe Takashi 6 9 is guilty of half these things they're, they're, they're trumping up on him. I actually believe there's other individuals that they are actually targeting from the camp he was running with. And I think that they're just using him as the glue to really stick this this case right. together. A lot of people don't understand how, you know, the RICO Act works. Right. You know? mm -hmm. A lot of it is just off hearsay, just affiliation. Right. And you know, if you if you if you around these guys at a certain point, you better be worried because <laughs> you see an indictment, meaning it's still continuous. They're still looking for people. They're still adding people to the to the case. Yeah, they're still building it. They're still building it, and. All you got to do is to be around them. If you're around them for X amount of time, if you're around them for any of those events that went down with, you know, right. shooting at the Barclays Center, if you was around for any of that and you was in that vicinity or running with that camp, mm -hmm. you better be worried. You better be worried because they're going to consider you some uh, a person of interest. Oh, yeah, because what they'll say is like, I guess the old saying goes, birds of a feather flock together. So even if you weren't doing something, you were with them, so you're doing something. Doing something. So it's like, it, it, it sucks. And that's why I always say that you always have to run with a tight circle and just know what people in your circle are pretty much capable of because one dude can, can, can take a whole crew down, man. It's <laughs> just one. All he needs is one. So. Or one post. I want, yeah. yeah. One post. And let's talk about the 2018, the year of self-snitching. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on, let's talk about it. There's been a lot of that going on, man. 
I mean, I've never seen such stupidity. I've never seen such stupidity. Dude. It is like people are becoming so comfortable on social media that they'll let you into places of their lives that back in the days you would only wonder. Like you didn't really know so much about artists, but the, the, the game has changed. Right. The more ex access you give a person to their life, you know, it's it's like the better. I guess that the fan base likes it more. They feel that they can relate to the person. They feel that person is a little more accessible to right. them. And that is starting to become a problem because the the technology is actually even though we look at technology and we we love using it right it's the flip side to it 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 can actually jam you up you know it can yes. put you you can tell so you can tell a police officer let me tell you something you can tell a police officer you wasn't where you were mm -hmm. when you were there right you probably might have been there and you probably had nothing to do with what they're coming at before. right but the fact that you said you weren't there when you were there Right. Yes, say that you were there. Now you kind of look guilty. Now you kind of right. look like you're a liar, which you were lying. But you probably didn't really do anything. But the fact that they can put you there, all mm. they need to do is use hearsay to. Right. Right. And, and and a lot of people have done years in prison because of this. And and, and you know what they say is this: like, you know, there are a lot of innocent people in prison, which I'll agree, there are a lot of innocent people in prison because, and, and not to digress, but you have a lot of police officers now who are being busted for planting fake drugs, or not fake drugs, planting drugs on people um, and saying, well, yeah, we got this guy, we got this guy. And I'm like, yo, dude, there was a cop down in Florida. This dude was busted for doing like tons of, um, planting uh, fake drugs on people. He was doing tons of that, man. And then on top of that, you know, it was, um, he got arrested and um, the officer got arrested. I think it was a sergeant. He got arrested and um, he's doing like three years in prison now, or four years in prison, something like that. But that's this one case that I've heard of a few where you have a lot of police corruption happening and, and, and things of that nature going on. And a lot of people are not really, you know, you, you, you hear about it now, but if you were to tell somebody something like that, some people are like, oh no, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen, but it happens more than you think. But now with the um, with technology being the way it is and, and the cameras and everything out here, a lot of these cops are getting exposed, you know? And a lot of people who are just doing things that are not police officers are just getting exposed. And people are exposing themselves, <laughs> doing self-snitching. <laughs> so, have to we have to really put things in perspective right now for all those people going in 2019 right you know that your social media is being watched oh yeah and it's social media is nothing but an additional eye yep and, and each account that you have is another eye yeah so oh, yeah. what you do on there you better be careful if you're gonna be shooting videos with guns and all this extra stuff Turn your location on. Yo, dude, not even in shit. Nowadays, you better use fake guns, man. <laughs> you know? Oh, well, well, shit, even better. Prevention better than the cure. Yeah, use fake guns because now you got all these guys shooting videos. Like it was um, a video in Houston that was shot. Yeah. And the majority of those dudes were getting arrested, and, and some of these guys already had warrants and all of this other stuff. And I'm like, yo, dude. And then you shot this video by elementary school. I'm like, that's just not smart, dude. Crazy shit is, the day they shot the video, mm -hmm. the cops pulled up, and I guess they might have arrested one or two guys. Right. Then the rest of them got away. But what happened was they uploaded the fucking video. And then they arrested the rest of the white girl. It's dude. almost like they knew, like, okay, y'all got away from now. Well, we know you shot a music video. We know you motherfuckers can't help yourselves. <laughs> Let's sit down here and wait for you. And you know, you and you know, these, upload your shit. And let's make you know, let's. And you know, the, and the cops probably know they be they be watching these videos back and forth, rewinding. They probably know the lyrics to the song. They probably be bumping into it. They be like, "We're gonna catch you." We're gonna. I'm like, dude, 
I'm like, and I'm not, I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm the type of person, man, it's just like, you got to use your common sense, man. But common sense nowadays what? is not all too common. Huh? Common sense. <laughs> you ever heard of that? <laughs> common oh, I'm, sense. I'm just saying, you know, for the people out there, there's people out there that don't know what the fuck that is. They think that's a rapper from Chicago. Yeah, and but but these police are on you, man. And and the thing is, you know, as I said, if you're gonna put out your music, put out your music. But just remember, when you start putting guns and stuff in the video and stuff like that, the cops don't even have to look around for you. They can just watch your video and just say, okay, well, we see you. This is what we're looking for. We know where he's gonna be at. And then these guys, these artists are putting up the location where they're going to be doing um, shows and stuff. So the cops will be waiting outside of these shows with their cameras rolling, waiting to pick these dudes up. So I'm just like, so you got you to gotta move. If you're going to do business with this music, you got to kind of leave the street stuff out of, out of the business, man. It has to be one or the other, dude. One or the other. Because both of them don't mix, man. They don't mix. Let me tell you. There's a word that's very, it's a lot more dangerous than it sounds. Um, it's a regular word, but I'm, I'm noticing this word can make you a target. And the word is influencer. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And y'all better be very wary of that word. That, that word right there can put you on an indictment somewhere. And very serious. They're looking at people that are, influence influencing the youth they're looking for people that have a following mm -hmm. influence and following yeah your twitter whether it's your you know your your facebook notification gang you know instagram instagram they're looking at what you are perpetuating to the public because mm -hmm. The police is there to police the public. And we got to get into this on another show, but there's a difference between public and private. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of y'all are doing, and, and, and public and private is like, public law and private law is like oil and water. They don't mix. Right. Mm -hmm. okay? So the officers, the government, whenever you put something public and they, you, they feel that it can affect the status quo, oh, you yeah. just them a right you're just giving them green light to put a bullseye on your back yeah okay because they're there to protect the public they serve the public but what a lot of you artists are, are screwing up is that you're mixing what is in the private and making it public right and you see that right there is going to get you your asses in a lot of shit okay public and private don't mix right yeah Public, public and private don't mix. What you do in the private, you should not be putting out in the public. Right. Okay. So I want all you artists out there to understand that if you're gonna put something in the public, you know, it, it's gonna come back. It's it's not gonna disappear. It'll always be there. Right. One, it's a permanent stain. So anything you do in the public will always be there. And it will always be there for public records. It'll always be there to find you. Right. Mm -hmm. Reem Hunt, football player, yeah. just got released from the Chiefs of, uh, I don't know, a month, a month or so ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. What 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 did he get jammed up in? He was in the hotel room, went out in the hallway, made the shit public. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm not saying he couldn't get in trouble doing something in the private room, but if you're doing something that, let's say you're smoking a joint mm -hmm. and you put your location on and right. you're in a non-smoking hotel and somebody that is in the hotel is following you and mm -hmm. you're alive smoking in the hotel that they work at, which is not allowed to have smoking. Right. If a voice knock at your fucking door. You're wondering why they're knocking at the goddamn door. Right. You see what I'm saying? You guys are putting these guys right on you. Right. Like a, you just boom, 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 over here. Mm -hmm. Come get me. Mm -hmm. 2019, please, folks, turn off your location and stop mixing public with pri um, private with public. And this is true. Then I also want to talk about the um, 
2018 um, in reference to like, like I noticed in this year, a lot of things is based on rivalries, old versus new. Okay. Um, I've, I've been noticing that. I, I Even like today, I was watching ESPN and they were talking about LeBron James being better than Michael Jordan and vice versa. Okay. And this is not a conversation. Everybody's running off. And I guess they must have asked LeBron, you know, does he feel he's the greatest? He must have said, yeah, you know, I, I do believe, you know, based on this, that, and the third, that I'm mm-hmm. the greatest. And I'm noticing, like, this year, it's just been about this error thing. It's like error versus error. So mm-hmm. we're trying to compare people from one era to, a, mm-hmm. a, to the more current era. Right. And I'm just kind of thinking, like, What's the point? Right. Why am I trying to compare my my 2019, 2018 me to 1998, 1999 me? Right. Yeah. What's the point? I was in a different point in my life. I my consciousness was a, was a lot different. Why am I comparing that to this? Mm-hmm. Why can't we leave things in the errors and just put things in perspective and say, look. You were great in your era. You dominated in your era. The rules were this way in your mm-hmm. era. Right. And I respect what you did with what you had in your era. Right. And we can't change that. Right. Why are we going to try to take two errors that are worlds apart where the rules were different, the technology was different, and try to compare? Well, right. What is the point? Yeah. We, it's, like we got, it's like this year they just had to create a rivalry. It had to be old versus new. I mean, look at the Migos situation. Oh, man. With I yeah. mean, why, why we got to be, why I got to be old versus new? Why I got to be the old niggas over here versus the new niggas and y'all not getting no money? What is that about, bro? You know what it is? I'm going to tell you what it is. At the end of the day, I believe no. it's ego. It's ego. It's the ego. Because the thing is that you can take a young dude who's an artist and say, well, I'm the best that there ever was. I'm the best. I'm like, wait a second. What would constitute you for being the best? Why? Because you have a hit record out right now? So a young dude who's a young rapper, is he going to come out and say, well, I'm better than the Jay-Z or I'm better than the Nas because I have a hit record out right now. I have an album out right now. So if you're looking at a new artist and you're looking at an older artist, Let's look at the older artist catalog and see what he has done or she has done compared to what the new artist has done right now. But even now, I say music is always going to change. And so you can't really say that, you know, I, I always think people are always looking for a new sound. So, you know, and, and people are always looking for different ways to reinventing themselves. But one thing I will say about Hip hop music. Now, comparing hip hop music to any other type of music, I think hip hop music, the fans are not as loyal as a rock base or country music base or even a, a, um, a soul base. Because you have people like the Rolling Stones or whatever, they'll keep touring until they're 100 years old. Now, how many artists? have you seen that a hip hop artist are in their 60s and 70s still performing on stage right now to sold out crowds? Hmm. Yeah, Think about that for a second. Hip hop, let me tell you something. Hip hop, I'm going to tell you something, bro. Hip hop has always been about the youth. Right. And because of that, it's like, the artists never learn to understand to respect the ones that came before them. And I think the younger generation, when I listen to them, and I listen to both sides, I don't pick sides. Right. I just yeah. look to, to, the, to the sides and not try to pick them. And a lot of the artists complain and say, well, look, man, y'all are big homies. Right. Y'all were around before us, but instead of, instead of coming at us about our music, y'all should be coming out about us well, coming at us and teaching us the game and teaching us this and teaching us that instead right. of coming down. And 
I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's purposely done, but there's always someone in the background trying to create this division within hip hop. Because right. hip hop feels like it's always got to have some type of division. It has to, if it's not East versus West, it's old versus new, you know? Right. And I think it's just something coming up for the higher ups. And I think the, the guys that are, you know, in the studio doing this music, they're the ones left to fight the battle. And it's really, really doesn't have to be a battle, you know? Um, so basically what you're saying is that it's created by somebody in a suit who's in the office that the regular people don't see, but then they let the people who are the artists and the ones who are creating the music fight amongst each other. Of course it is, man. I agree. Of course it is. It's always the suits. It's always the guys that, you know, you see all those award shows in between those artists that you don't even know who they are. <laughs> you don't even know who they are. But right. These people make decisions that affect artists' lives, you know. And Dane Dash spoke on that, you know. And, you know, this 2018 was the year of, you know, calling out the so-called culture vultures. And a lot of people feel like, this is something that is being swept under the rug and a lot of the older artists are starting to come out and are starting to expose the fact that there are a lot of people in position, like a hidden hand, right. that kind of staring the culture in the direction that it's going in and wants the, the culture to promote the drugs, the violence, all the things you see a lot of the artists dying from. Remember right. we spoke earlier on artists such as X Extension and just to name a few, the um, Young Greatness, the, the Marley G's of the world, these artists that are that are going from either uh, gun violence or guys like Fredo Santana that are OD and Mac Miller OD on drugs. Yeah. And this is what's being uh, promoted into the music. So there's definitely something going on behind the scenes. A lot of people say there's a, uh, a uh, school to prison pipeline, and I can kind of believe it because you kind of look at the music and what it what it promotes, and it promotes things that are going to put you in the feds. Dude, I mean, I've read articles that said that you know the government would start look they'll start looking at fourth graders to see if well. Around that age group, around that age group, it's between fourth and fifth grade to see like the direction that kids are going to be going into because I guess that's the most uh, time when they're most um, impressionable. So they kind of figure out, you know, um, well, okay, well, we're going to build X amount of prisons because we have this generation of kids coming up. So they try to do statistics on that now. To say, okay, well, this is the group that's coming up. You saw what? They're collecting data. They're yeah, they're collecting data. data. Data on the fourth graders. Right. And project into the future the, their behaviors. Yeah, behavior patterns. And I think, and being that my mom is a, a retired special ed teacher, you know, she's dealt with a lot of kids who are in special ed. But the thing is that a lot of them were, were smart, is what she said. But some of them had like behavioral behavioral problems and stuff like that. But a lot of that is coming from home. So everybody's background or their family background or their family situation is not really solid. But that doesn't mean that they're not smart. It's just that maybe they lack attention in certain things. And then that's why they put them in special ed. So the, the school system already kind of pushes them in, into a category and say, well, you act this way, you're going to get in, in this group. You know, so it's like, you know, we really have to have a lot of um, parenting, a lot of parenting, a lot of parents stepping up their parenting. And, um, and that's another topic. But, you know, they have to be more involved in their kid's life as far as their education and stuff like that is concerned. Because, you know, you have some parents that will send their kids to school and it's just like, okay, well, they're out of my hands for X amount of time during the day. So you're the babysitter. That's not what school's really about. Because when they leave school, the continuing education is in your household. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. That's where education really should start. And then that's where the education should actually continue. It's right. The house. So mm -hmm. A lot of parents are letting the TV raise their children. And that all leads back to what we were saying before with the artists and mm -hmm. you got the television shows that are kind of swaying the minds of the mm -hmm. young youth out there. And we really need to talk about that. We need to address that. 
And, uh, you know, you made some good points, man. Um, for anybody just tuning in, I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your boy, Cool Breeze. And this is Sim Radio Cast. Uh, we first show um, last year of 20, last day of 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, tomorrow's 2019. So happy New Year's Eve and happy New Year's to anybody tuning in. We're just pretty much doing a recap of the year 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, just discussing different things. We discussed. Uh, discussed the fact that 2018 was one of the deadliest years for rappers um, as far as the urban music scene is concerned. A lot of artists uh, suffered, um, you know, losing their lives due to gun violence. And a lot of it was gun violence also, uh, at, you know, excessive drug use. So OD and such things of that nature, rather. Right. Um, you know, we touched on different things, uh, self-snitching, Oh man, you know, artists uh, going on social media, kind of telling them themselves, and also what, what else did we talk about? We talked about old versus new, right? Um, mm -hmm. They try to engineer a new. They they can't do east versus west, so now I guess it's like old versus new. Whether you're talking Migos versus the Bone Thugs of Harmony, or you're talking LeBron James versus Michael Jordan, right? Um, I, this year, I've been just kind of peeping it. I'm noticing like everything is kind of about old versus new, right? Um, yeah. But uh, something else I wanted to talk about, man, uh, kind of controversial. Okay. Uh, uh, let me ask you this question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just ask you this question. All right. Do you believe that you are from Africa? Your ancestors come from Africa, and if so, why? Or if not, why not? Because this has come up, and in 2018. There's a brother by the name of Dane Calloway. He's one of the, the mm. people um, kind of like bringing this to the light. Um, mm -hmm. He's been saying that we in America, we in America are not African. We are not from there. Right. And that said, uh, Kofi, what, what, what are your thoughts? Do you believe you're from Africa or do you believe your ancestors, ancestors come from somewhere else? I think, well, I, I think and, and what I feel from my from my information, I don't believe that we are all from Africa. And if we are from Africa, I would say that we were here way before Christopher Columbus, quote unquote, discovered the Americas. Because there's evidence that shows that Africans were circumnavigating around this planet before Christopher Columbus came over and slaughtered the natives over here in Americas. And, and furthermore, I think we are natives to this country because I think that a lot of uh, lies and stuff through history, there's a lot of stuff that they don't tell us that's just pretty much under our noses and, and, and right in front of us. You know, and I can go from like the pyramids that are here in the States. That a lot of people don't talk about that. They don't talk about that. You know, and um, it, it and it's, it's just a lot of stuff. It's, it's a lot of stuff to talk about at this at this time. It's gonna we're gonna definitely need a whole show for this. But you know, we were we were definitely here before that that dude Christopher Columbus came over here, and it was evidence because if you look up pictures of natives, natives look like us. They were dark like us. They they, they were pretty much black, and and some of them looked more like uh coolie or indian so they, they 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 look like us they were they were a part of us they are us you know because the thing is if you look at history they don't they tell you bits and pieces of what they want you to know but there's so many there's so many things that they leave out like you like where do um white people come from they don't come from over here they're not native to this country over here they're European, specifically from uh, Britain, but yet they don't they don't tell you that too much. The information is there, but they don't tell you that. And it's not just like you know, oh, uh, you're being racist or nothing. Is this is this fact? Is this white white scientists will tell you that you know that we're not from here? I'm a little funny about white scientists, by the way. It's well, little you know, <laughs> little suspect. So I, I just yeah. Started you know, certain ones. And, and I like to touch on what you said about like when Christopher Columbus came right. or never came into the Americas, by the way. 
folks. He never stepped foot on North America. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, right. I was in all of the Dominican Republic, or the, what they used to call it, the island of Espanol. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we know for a fact natives were here. People of a dark skin hue were here. Right. Um, to answer the question I ask you, I do not believe I am a descendant of Africa. Um, and I'm going to tell you the reason why. It's uh, actually several reasons why I could tell you. Um, I, I never felt like I'm from the Caribbean. I'm, I'm going to just say this. I'm from the Caribbean. I'm born in a tiny island in the Caribbean called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And that's where I was born. Now, I live in the United States, and I've been here for many years, been here since I was about five years old. So you can say I'm American. But I always get homesick. Right. I'm always homesick. If I don't go home for X amount of years, mm -hmm. I do get homesick. I do want to go back, and I just kind of want to be back in that environment. It's just something about it just always calls me back there. And there's a, there's a, there's a whole bunch of islands in the Caribbean. But that, that island, I always want to feel like. If I go to the Caribbean, I always want to stop there because that's right. home. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Africa, I don't feel like I'm from there. I don't feel like I miss there. Right. I feel like I've never been there. And none of the people in my family have been there. And none, mm -hmm. of, none of the people in my family have even discussed going there. Right. And Feel like deep down inside, I'm like, if that's home, something in your DNA will tell you, like, you need to go back home because it happens to me all the time. And also, I've dealt with Africans, like, as far as in business, mm -hmm. and I can tell you this from the experience that I've had, I can tell that me a lot different than they view themselves. Okay, you know, I feel like they have like a they, they know there's a difference and they're just not willing to tell you that there's a difference. And there's a lot of folks out there right now that are presenting it. Like I said, the brother Dane Calloway is, is bringing a very, very tough case against the people that are so-called pan-Africanists. Mm. Um, he's, he's really putting the fire and the torch to a lot of people's behinds because the man actually went out and did research and he actually did the research here in the United States and, and started um, from what he's gathered. He's saying that a lot of us did not come off no slave ships. He yes. said a lot of people that were born here via ship were actually us, but a lot of us from here that were over there. Right. Mm -hmm. Europeans came looking for people. Well, if some outsiders is in Africa and, mm -hmm. and Europeans, the European forces looking for slaves, well, who are you going to give up? Right. Yeah. Give up but that's not from there. You're right. Not from there. See, see, you can get him. He ain't from right. here. Right. Get him yeah. From here. Right. I mean, I'm thinking like this. It's, it's no different than if I'm a dude from LA and I got a crew, we moving to Baltimore. Right. And then the boys come through and they got the block out. They looking for the biggest drug dealer. And then the guys in Baltimore is like, yo, look, yo, off. I mean, we ain't trying to drop no dime, but you know, you got these cats in Cali. You know, <laughs> They ain't come out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they're gonna get your gonna get your ass up out of here, man. So from there, bro. So basically what you're saying is that the only thing that really changed was time. That's it. The uh, only thing that changed is time. Let me tell you something. Time mm -hmm. and you gotta understand, bro. In this country, when the people take over land, right. It can move the people. They can change the name of the land mm -hmm. while the people are still on it. Yeah. They can kind of move things without actually moving you. Right. Yeah. So you now, what the first thing you do is you change the name of everything. You change the name of everything. So if these people grew up in this area and it was called, let's say, Elizabeth, right. you change it to Igor. That that's the same thing they did with um Central Park. Central Park wasn't always Central Park. No. And there was people and there was people living in Central Park. Yes. Yes. That's a fact. Yeah. But this is not even that far back. Yeah, you're right. This is not even that far back. And it's already disappeared from the consciousness of the people. Right. You know? 
So let me tell you, all it takes is less than one generation to change the whole narrative of where you come from. Yeah, it's true. That's it. All it takes is one generation. That's it. Mm -hmm. And the whole consciousness of where you're from, where you originate from, can be scrambled. It could be scrambled just like that. Yeah, it's true. So I don't feel I am from Africa. I don't, I don't exhibit the features of a lot of African people. Mm -hmm. And I noticed there's a, some, some very unique distinctions between us and them, just, just some basic things about us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I believe it was Dane Calloway who said this, and he made some really good points, man. It, it, it's really hard to argue. I actually brought this up from my little brother. My little brother was kind of like, what? What do you mean? Like, you sure you, you, you buying into this? And I'm like, yo, man, I just, I just don't feel I'm from there. And, and, and when uh, I believe it was Dane Calloway said, well, if you we were from Africa and they brought us over there in slave ships and the European is from over there, then how the hell do we know how to work the land? Because the, the lands in America, it's a lot different than the lands in Africa. How yeah. would we be able to come from another continent to a continent we knew nothing about and the European is not from here? Right. Not from so how the hell do we know how to, how to work the land? Right, yeah. You know, um, where are all the slave ships? Yeah. I mean, we got all these museums. We have all these artifacts. But we, we I mean, let's think about this. We got artifacts from ancient Egypt. Yeah. We got papyruses. We have uh, clay tablets, whatever. We got all this ancient BC stuff. Right. Where's the slave ships? That's a good question. Whoa. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why I ain't seen a single slave ship in the museum, bro. Why? Like, these are questions we got to start asking, man. See, dinosaur bones, quote unquote, dinosaur yeah, bones. Real. You know, if those are even real, because I have a, a hunch about the whole dinosaur thing. Hey, I, man. I, I, I know this is going to get controversial, but I don't believe there was no giant lizard. I believe there's giant humans. And the Bible yeah. says giant humans. And I mean, we can go into a whole different show about that, but I believe they're trying to hide the fact that they were giant humans and give us a bunch of little freaking. Lizards, <laughs> you know, it's not <laughs> lizards, not humans. I were lizards, yeah, you know, so uh, they talk for themselves, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I believe there's a lot of things that are being like totally kind of removed because you know, books in the Bible have been removed, and right? Some have been removed based on the people that conquer other people, right? Oh, yeah. To try to wipe away their existence. Exactly. Because, you know, mm. when you take over a people, if you can make them forget about themselves and their own history, you've totally conquered them. Oh, yeah. You've totally conquered them. So when you, you look at people in America, we do Black History Month. Yeah. When you, you just give them a month, and the people that are celebrating Black History Month, all they focus on is slavery. But I'm like, Okay, slavery was one snapshot in history. What about before slavery? Why don't right. we talk about that? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. That's just something that that always like crosses my mind when I, I um I think about like history and are we from Africa and things of that nature. I believe we're from North America. I feel like we might have done trade with our cousins over there. We we probably related, but I don't think we're them. And yeah. I just, I was telling somebody this the other day, uh, cool. Uh -huh. I was like, yo, dude, I don't believe you from Africa because I know niggas that don't even leave their own neighborhood. They yeah. ain't even on no damn plane to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so let's, um, you know. Um, pretty much. We had a nice little conversation for all those tuning in, man. This is uh, Sin Radio Cast. I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your man, Cool Breeze. And this is going to be this is going to be the first of many. Uh, we're putting Sin Radio Sin Radio Cast back on. We were doing it before, and um, we figured out a way to kind of get it back up and going. 
to the way we want to get it back up and going. So, you know, this is going to be the first of many, and we, we got a lot of stuff planned, man. Got a lot of stuff planned. Definitely, and we're going to have some real interesting people on real soon, man. I just really looking forward to building into the 2019. And, you know, first show, we just wanted to kind of recap the last year. Uh, just want to kind of shout a few people out, all my folks back home in St. Vincent Grenadines. Today, we, we actually called today um, Old Year's because um, it's old year and then we're going to the new year over here we're going to new year's eve so all my people's back home uh shout outs to you shout outs to my moms who's actually down there right now my family members uh shout outs to the atl all my people's down here uh, shout outs to my man cool b the whole la new Ooh, york that's where make from um you know and uh hopefully you guys tune in uh kick it with us give us some show topics whatever you want to talk about we're open to it and we just want to provide you guys with a platform that gives you a lot of information. And uh, next show, we'll probably be going into uh, another, uh, a, a more concentrated topic. Um, maybe going to travel for the new year for all those people that are that have not traveled yet. Um, right. Mm -hmm. We want to do a show for y'all. Uh, anybody who's never traveled abroad, we got a show just for you. So um, stay tuned and make sure you tune back in. All right, man. Peace, brother. Yo, all right, man, we're going to sign off. Yo, peace, cool, B. Um, it's great chopping it up with you, and I'm um, looking forward to many more shows, man. Definitely, man. Peace. Right. Peace out.